the process starts by going to the sawmill and I shall kind of rummage through the shelves and pick out the cleanest, straightest bits of wood I can find. I take them back to the workshop and then clean them up, so plane them flat and then I'll actually rip, rip them sort of down into strips and then glue the strips back together. And then this, this forms a composite of different types of wood which gives the ski both strength and flexibility. The Schnechte ski concept was born out of an idea to make the ultimate Scottish steep backcountry ski. The name Schnechte means snow in Gaelic but also is a, an amazing piece of terrain in the Cairngorms, the Corian Schnechte. We've had to deal with in Scotland the idea that the snow is quite impermanent. So I suppose that the Scottish skier has become sharper for when they actually get on the slope. So people are more hawkish about looking at conditions and, uh, and I think that's really led to a, an explosion of, of ski touring and, and ski mountaineering in Scotland. The book Two Planks of Passion by Roland Huntford is amazing work where he's got both kind of historical timeline of skiing and technical as well. It goes all the way back to the, the first skis or skiing equipment ever discovered all the way up to kind of modern ski racing. But then also has lots of technical information, drawings, dimensions and things like that. I used it to develop the first pair of skis that I made according to an old Norwegian design. My favourite bit is probably when it's come out of the press as, as a kind of lump, a big block, and you've got to then cut it out. But the moment, the moment that you actually begin to cut the, the shape of the ski out and you sand it and then it looks beautifully clean and it suddenly kind of emerges out of this mess. And at that point onwards, the refining and the, and the shaving and the, and the sculpting that you do is my favourite bit. in Highland Perthshire, gone outside my bungalow in the kind of peak of the, the rut and seen uh, two red stags and they were, they were rutting amongst these kind of swirling beech leaves and it was an incredible scene and they were so busy that they didn't notice me and the dog like slowly creeping up to them. We managed to get within 10 meters of them and, uh, and I managed to record it on a piece of footage and a picture. Eben had picked up on this and engraved it onto the wood. About two months later, when he'd finished the artwork, comes back an amazing kind of vision of this scene outside the bungalow. It was quite a magical scene at the time as well. Hey Sarah. Hi Jamie, How's it how going? are you? Very good. Thanks for coming in. So what do you think people will think about them when they see them in the context of the museum? I wonder if they'll think that they're a historical ski, but then maybe they'll look closer and see that the, the shape and the design is modern, but also perhaps take some cues off the fact that they're, you know, the Gaelic name, the artwork inspired by Scotland. Maybe they'll get the connection that the ski was very much inspired by traditional historical skis, but in a modern context. One of the things that's particularly interesting about Jamie's work is the way that his use of natural materials and sustainable methods of craft in the skis is intimately tied in with Scotland's physical landscape. Scotland is really unusual in that it has a hugely diverse natural landscape that has shaped industry and culture for centuries. And recently, in years where we can't rely on snow, we've seen a really vibrant backcountry skiing scene emerge. We were really excited to be able to collect the Schnechte skis from Jamie alongside a group of objects that included the first wooden pair of skis he ever made and tested at Glen Shee. We also collected a book that Jamie used for inspiration both on the historic side of skiing but also to learn about technical details. The group is completed with the award that Jamie won for the Schnechte skis in 2017. As a whole, those objects tell the story right from inspiration through development and then to the ski's success on the world stage. The skis are all about celebrating the Scottish landscape and the Scottish ski culture. 
that was kind of the goal of the, the overall project actually. To make a ski that would celebrate the, the object of the ski itself and the idea of something quite natural being high performance as well.